Hey, thanks for being with us tonight. Sturgeon spearing season starts this weekend, and yep. today spears are out there on the ice preparing. Oh, it's huge. If you're not from around here, you have no idea how big this is. They're setting up their shanties and cutting the holes, which is a cool process just in itself. The DNR has sold a record more than 13,000 sturgeon spearings license this season. The season opens at 7 o'clock Saturday morning. Now joining us live is Ryan Koenigs. He is a DNR sturgeon biologist. Ryan, tell us, what are we looking at right now for the 2015 season? Well, the biggest predictor of spearing success is water clarity. I always say you can't spear a fish that you can't, can't see. see them, yeah. So uh, we were out Tuesday checking water clarity at more than 20 sites around Lake Winnebago, and the water clarity is really variable this year. We had relatively clear conditions of 16 plus, 16 plus feet of clarity along the east and north shores of Lake Winnebago. On the south shore and the west shore, it was more inconsistent. Some areas we could only see 5 to 10 feet down. Other areas we could see bottom in 10 to 13 feet. You know what's cool about this thing that I always like is the tradition, the family traditions. I mean, this goes back generations, doesn't it? I mean, that's a really cool event for them. Yeah, I always say that the, the sturgeon itself, the population, provide the fishery that can take place, but it's really the social aspects of the sport, the culture and tradition that goes behind it, that group camaraderie that really keeps people coming back year after year. Now, tell us a little bit, is this year different compared to a couple of years ago? I know it was really warm in like 2012. This year it's a little bit colder as we're leading into it. Does the cold weather help at all? I don't think the cold weather is going to have much of an impact on the spearing itself. What it will do is it will firm up the access points so people can get out on the lake. With that volume of traffic going out on a, on a, body, of a body of ice this time of the year, you can imagine it can, warmer weather can, can kind of muck up those landings. So that'll help. Uh, the one thing we do ask this year is, because we actually register every fish that's harvested, right. we're asking people that after they harvest their fish shortly after to bring it to one of our registration stations. So it's just easier for us to work with the fish rather than working with a block And of those ice. are found all around the lake, right? We have eight stations operating on Lake Winnebago and then three for the Upper River Lakes fishery. And like I said, if you go to Jim and Linda's in the town of Pipe, get that bratwurst hamburger patty with the cheese and the onions in between. It's amazing. I'll have to try it. <laughs> Give it hey, does Jim Gantner still sturgeon spear? I did a story with Jim Gantner one time spearing. I'm not sure if oh. he does or not. I'm sure if he's still around, he does, though. Tell him we said hello. Typically, people that get involved in sturgeon spear and don't give it up, I mean, they just keep coming back. Absolutely. Year year. Now, let's talk a little bit about safety here for the spears. I mean, you know, just in regards to the cold weather, you got to watch out for frostbite. What else should spears be on the lookout for for safety? The biggest thing is just to watch out for the cracks and to know mm -hmm. where you're traveling out on the ice. Overall, the ice thickness isn't isn't too bad. We have 14 to 20 inches of ice over most of the lake. It's the cracks that people should watch out for. And to really get a better idea on what conditions are where people plan on going, they should look to contact the local fishing clubs that operate, right. uh, maintain the road access points. Yeah, those are the best people. Yes. Otter Street Fishing Club, places mm -hmm. like that, they know what they're talking about. Exactly. And most of these clubs are, are close to the access points to the lake, yep. mm -hmm. and they're operating and maintaining tree lines and, yep. and plowed roads so people can get Don't out guess. safely. Don't guess. Yep. Now, Ryan, exactly. you've been doing this for a while. I have to ask, what is your favorite part about spearing season? Well, I grew up in Chilton, Wisconsin, so I actually grew up spearing myself. I was lucky enough to harvest a fish in 2010, so I kind of missed that <laughs> aspect on opening weekend of being able to get out there and spear and cut in. Um, but in terms of my position right now, just the overall days, festivities eh? and, and the circus that really accompanies Very opening cool. day, it's kind of a rush that you get every year of another surgeon spear. Are season. they good to eat? I think they're pretty good to eat. They're really good smoked. Uh, my wife, the one I speared, she didn't care for it as much. But, <laughs> but a lot of people, you know, it's not it's not something that's sought after as a delicacy sure. like walleye or yellow perch. Sure. But people that do spear them do eat them. Cool. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Thanks so much for being here, Ryan. We really Very appreciate cool. it.